it's time for another exciting episode of Real Good at Doing Stuff. Dang, you guys are so so lucky. <clears throat> Anyhow, today we're talking about something that sounds really boring. Maybe it is, I don't know. Um, but it's very, very important uh, to you and your racing program, whether you not know it or not. Um, and this ma this matters. What we're going to talk about is data management. Um, uh, when you're dealing with data from race cars, it, it's easy to get overwhelmed and lost and uh, out in the weeds when you need to know exactly where everything's at, where you can get to it really quick. And this matters whether it's you tuning your own race car or if you're um, uh, dealing with somebody else, somebody else is helping you. Um, if that's the case, this will help. Uh, it'll help you help them. They'll appreciate you watching this video and uh, and maybe learning from it. And uh, it'll help you get your your your, your dialogues and stuff in order, um, which will make it easy for easier on them. Um, so either way, it's going to help you. All right. So to to, to get started here, uh, if we go in Holly, let's say you just made a pass and you've downloaded the uh the data and everything it's time to look at it i'll tell you what let's back up a little bit let's first let's let's say we're going to the racetrack we're going to go uh to mooresville for test and tune um or uh, a race or whatever the first thing you need to do in my opinion before you get to the racetrack before you even leave or as soon as you get there or whatever is is create some file folders um before you even start um, and what I'm getting at is here in here is, is, uh, go down here to your little, little file folder icon. And, uh, I'm not a super computer savvy guy. I know how to do what I need to do with them. But, uh, one thing that somebody told me years ago that helped me a lot with computers is just understanding that they're basically just big filing cabinets. And you can think of all this as like different filing cabinets within other filing cabinets and folders and maybe the building that it's in and like just think of it as a hierarchy of cabinets so if we're going to looking for let's say we're going to start with our holly stuff go to documents then you go to holly v6 now uh what i would first do is go to global files and let's say in this case uh we would probably have let's make a new file go to new folder and let's say whose car we're dealing with let's say mark rogers good enough uh, more change than brains All right now open that up there's nothing in there make a new folder let's go maybe m r m v i l t and t and if you want you can put a date or whatever all right now what we've done is we've created a place to put a global file that's specific to what you're doing today and the reason that's important is because if you don't you're going to end up with just one great big file full of tons of, of global files and such and over immediately that doesn't matter but over time it's going to get really confusing and you're not going to be able to find anything in there Whereas if you kind of put it in its own file each time you go to the track, you're going to be way better off. All right, now go back out. Data logs, same thing. New folder. And this this matters whether you're you know you're dealing with just your car or if you're somebody like me, you're dealing with a bunch of cars. It's even more important. You really got to do this. So let's go. Uh, mod motor mark data all right now that's a file just for marks data open it same thing new folder mville t and t whatever you want to doesn't matter just save it as something so you know what it is and, you, and when you look at it you'll know all right well that's from when we did this and you can go back and find stuff save right now here's why we did that did this go in your holly 
let's look at we've just downloaded uh, data from a pass whatever it was doesn't matter open data log all right let's open okay well you saw that let's do that again all right see all this bunch of numbers maybe if you're an engineer at Holly you know what this means I don't and I'm really not going to know what it means a month from now. Um, so it's important for you uh, to let's to get rid of to make this information usable to yourself. All right, so we've already opened this up. Now the first thing you want to do in in a drag racing uh, environment, in my opinion, is you have always have trans brake logged on the first. Uh, whatever you call these things thing with bobs <clears throat> there's the technical term um i always have trans break in there right and to do that you just open up here and drop trans break in there and pull something out if you have to make room for it but i always have trans break in the first one so that i can do this immediately right now what i do is i go to the usually i do the last point that it's on if you look at this light right here the light light up it's on, off, on. All right. What matters is that you do it the same way every time. It doesn't matter if you do on or off, really, you know. Um, but this is your trans brake release uh, moment, right? All right. So what I do is find the last point when it's on. Go up here to Z. Click. Would you like to use the current point as a zero time for this log file? Yes. All right, now what that does is, is that makes the, that the zero point, right? Okay, well, drag racing is a time-based motorsport. It's all about time. So if we don't have that zero referenced, we don't know where we're at in the run. So now you can use this to line up everything with your, your time slip incrementals. Um, uh, you know any information that you're looking at on the racetrack you can you can line it up with uh with this pass this is uh, i don't know what pass this is or what car it's crap <clears throat> but anyhow um now you got a zero point and uh the immediately after that you need to do something else because that by itself that's cool and everything but it still doesn't really help you get your information organized go up here to this little save as plus thing click on that and go into that file that you created for the testing today. Mod Motor Mark Data, MVIL TNT. All right, there's nothing in there because you haven't put anything in there yet. Now, name that as MVIL T1 or whatever. In a lot of cases, you might put in some uh, incrementals. 1092. Not a comma. Two ninety-five four thirty-five whatever, uh, and then mile an hour one hundred ninety-five. That sounds good. <clears throat> um, and then save that. All right. Now, why do we do that? Because now we have uh, tagged this information with something that we might remember. And we've put it in a place where it makes sense. So we can at any point go back and look at that and uh, quickly access that information and go from there, right? And then one of the pieces of information that's in here automatically, you need to be aware of, right down here in the bottom right, this is the tune that was in that car on that pass, right? Um, and if you have that information, then you can go look and find that global file to match the two. And the reason that may matter is you may need to, you may be, uh, you're in E2 fixing to go into uh, E3, and you need to you need the boost map out of that pass from the other day. You think that's going to work? Well, then you can just go grab that and import it into your current tune quickly and efficiently, and move on. Um, and that. Uh, 
you've got to be able to access this stuff really fast, especially, you know, drag racing is a, uh, a complicated thing sometimes. And a lot of times there may be, you may be kind of in the heat of the moment and have all, all kinds of problems. The other day we had a car with an injector issue and we're scrambling to fix that. At the same time that's happening, I've got to fix a tune issue that we've got and, and get ready for the next round quickly. Well, if I can't find this information rapidly, we got big problems, you know. So um, this will help you a lot. And if you're dealing with more cars like I am, you've got to do this or else you're never going to be able to keep track of anything. Um, and uh, so if you're, and especially if you're dealing with somebody else that's tuning your car for you or whatever, when you go to email this file, now when we go to email this file, the name of the file is MVLT1-109-295-435-195. And the timestamp is worked out. So when your guy opens up this file, it's not Greek. It already makes sense. Uh, he's probably going to do this immediately anyhow, right? But if you've already done it for him, you've already made sense of this, and uh, it saves a whole lot of headache on his end because he doesn't have to go look for some file with a bunch of numbers and get confused. Um, it just makes it so much easier. And put it in a folder where it makes sense for you. Create a new one every time before you go to the track, before you load the car. We're going here. Let's make a folder for all this stuff, for global files, put them all in one place for every trip to the track. The data from uh, for every trip to the track in one folder. Uh, I just make it so much. Then also, you can take that folder and email the whole folder to whoever's helping you with Tune quickly, right? Instead of having to copy and paste a bunch of them, you can just do it in one little swoop and get it all done. Very important. Um, the other reason that you want to get the zero worked out, it's probably obvious, but once you've got the zero worked out, then you can open up other t other data logs and uh, put them right on top and they're synced up. Otherwise, they're going to be, uh, the time is not going to make any sense and it's not going to work. you got to line them up on top of each other and the way you do that is zeroing. It's maybe elemental to a lot of you guys, but do it every single time, every time do it. And then you, you will, uh, you will not regret it. Um, now, uh, this goes for pretty much any kind of software. I don't care if you're using Holly, um, big stuff, full tack, hall tack, this tack, the other tack, whatever. It doesn't matter. V tack, same thing. All right. Uh, also, your Davis stuff, if you're using that, um, same thing. Um, always fill this out before you load it every time because that'll help timestamp it a little bit. I usually try it when I can or I remember to. I make a tune, even if I'm not changing it, I make a tune that says, even if I leave it the same from E2 to E3, I make a new one that says E3 because that way I, I'm sure that e, when I go back to look at something, I can look at the difference and I go to that tune and pull it up and see E3 or whatever. Um, and then when you get, when you download your data afterwards, go over to it. And usually the first thing I do is it'll have all this, you know, date stuff, which is great. But a lot of times I'll, I'll right click rename and change it to something that's more relevant to me so that I can go back in there later on and make heads or tails of it. Same thing down here with the corrections. Rename it. Um, and uh, that way it's going to make a lot lot more sense to you. And the same with the folder system. Even in the profiler, make a new folder for that trip to the track and then start filling it up. Um, it will make your life uh, much easier in my opinion. Like I say, this goes for any software. Doesn't really matter. Um, whether you're doing it yourself or somebody else is helping you, either way, um, it's a good deal. And that's it for today.